I built an AI capable machine for less than 500 bucks. And what I mean by this is it can run all of the AI tools I've been showing on my channel like RVC, Tortoise, local LLMs, and even Stable Diffusion. It's definitely not going to be the fastest, but if you're trying to get your foot into the door, this is something that you could consider for building a PC. And for the build today, it's going to be revolving around this 3060 12 gigabyte NVIDIA GPU, and it has to be the 12 gigabyte version of the 3060, or else this build would not work. Often, a lot of times in these AI tools, the bare minimum VRAM requirement is 12 gigabytes in order to load the weights of different model sizes, and having 12 gigabytes allows for more flexibility with playing around with different architectures if you're trying to get into these AI tools. As well, you can run larger batch sizes and process more data if you have more VRAM compared to one that was at 8GB. So for the other parts of the build, I went with an Intel Core i3-12100F as CPU doesn't really matter in terms of speed for AI training. And then I went with a Gigabyte B660M motherboard, 1TB of SSD storage, and 16GB of RAM, a micro ATX tower from Cooler Master, and then for the power supply, I went with an Apevia ATX PR800, and then I grabbed myself a Wi-Fi card as well. And so if I tally up all of these numbers before tax, it comes out to $370.94. And you may be wondering, Jared, how is this $500? Well, I was able to get my GPU on eBay for quite a bargain deal. So originally I had bought it at 189.50 used and then when I got it I realized that the HDMI port was damaged. Uh, we worked something out and we were able to get $25 off of the GPU. So at that it comes out to 164.50 and and then I had a promotional deal which took $50 off so I got my Nvidia 3060 for $114.50 which if I now total everything up comes out to $485 and 44 cents. All right, now I know not everyone's gonna be able to buy a 3060 for 115 bucks. You can buy them used for closer to around 200. You just have to be patient. I, I was bidding on things for about a month before I actually got the card at the price that I wanted it at. So you can get it for about 200 or less than 200. And if you do get it at that, the reason I upgraded on some of the parts was because I was able to get the graphics card for pretty cheap. But if you do get it at 200, you would just need to get a different motherboard like the B610, a cheaper Wi-Fi card. Instead of one terabyte, you could opt for 512 storage. And then you could also go with a smaller and cheaper power supply unit as well. As well, there are a bunch of different CPU and motherboard combos you could go with out there to get you cheaper than what I got mine at. The reason for this is because we don't really care about CPU speed. We just need the computer to run without it lagging like crazy. And then just a little bit of speed for the pre-processing steps of the AI tools. And lastly, I didn't consider operating system, but you know, you could do Linux for free or you could get a cheap $10 to $15 Windows license out there. And there are plenty of sites to go do that at as well. And before we get to building things, I want to introduce you to something that has made my workspace a much more pleasant experience. So this here is the FlexiSpot E7 that they sent on over to me and it's honestly been a pleasure to have in my workstation as I'm able to lower and raise the desk to any height that I need to be able to work at. There are some great convenience features that come on the touchpad of the FlexiSpot E7 where you can set presets for standing and for sitting as well it comes with things like child lock and anti-collision and on the right side of the touchpad there is a charging USB port that you can use as well. Additionally what surprised me quite a bit was that the table at standing height for me is quite stable. For example the most active I'll ever be when using the mouse and keyboard is while gaming and the test subjects I had here was water and one of my figurines and while gaming there's not much movement of either the water or my figurine so the only time the desk jolts or shakes is if you intentionally try to move it and that is just a limitation of two-legged standing desks. And they say it can hold up to 355 pounds and so I went ahead and laid on the table and it raised me up just fine. Note that I weigh 190. So if you're looking to revamp your desk or your workspace, I recommend the FlexiSpot E7. It is a great addition to mine. I got mine with the cable management tray and that helps out a ton because I'm pretty messy with cables. So I just shove all those in there and it makes my workspace underneath the desk look super clean. If you are interested in getting one, I do have a promo code YTB15 for any purchases over $500. It'll be 10% off. And if the E7 is a little bit out of your range, you can opt for the E2, which still maintains the standing functionality. Or if you want more stability, you could opt for the E7Q, which has four legs instead of two. And a huge thanks to FlexiSpot for sending over the desk as it helps me out literally every day when I'm trying to work on stuff if I need things higher or lower and will definitely come in handy in today's build. So I started off 
off by getting everything onto the motherboard and I ran into a couple of issues with the motherboard trying to get everything on there. Um, with the case, I forgot to put on the monitor shield and had to take the motherboard out of the case a total of three times. After the motherboard was the PSU and getting everything all hooked up. So the PSU was pretty straightforward to put inside of the machine. And then lastly was just getting all of the cables nicely through the backside and connected onto the motherboard so that everything worked to be powered on correctly. Once that was the case, I was able to go ahead and put in the GPU as well as the Wi-Fi card for the PCI slots. And that was pretty much it. Plugged in the power, plugged in the HDMI to my monitor and it was working. Okay, so here we have it. It's all built and it is ready to go. We are just installing Windows. So once all of that is done, we're going to go ahead and install those AI tools that I said about in the beginning and do a little bit of testing. It's not going to be too extensive like my previous video as I already tested the 3060 versus the 4090 if you want to go check that video down below in the description. So it's just going to be a brief little test to make sure everything works just fine with the GPU and the setup that I've got going. All right, so I have kind of a wonky setup right here. I'm using um, Google Remote Desktop to actually see my PC right now in order for me to record it. So yeah, that it, it sh shouldn't be too laggy because I'm on the same Wi-Fi, but yeah, that is what I had to do for recording. So here we are, we are training in Tortoise TTS and it is training currently at 12 seconds per epoch for about a 10 minute data set. And you know, that's it's it's training at 3060, it's training. It's going to finish the training just fine. I could wait for it to finish, but I'm actually going to stop it here and just show off some inference. All right, so here's Tortoise. We're just going to go ahead and generate a sentence for a, hey, how are you doing? We're just going to go ahead and choose the partially trained voice that I have here, show off some experimental settings and go ahead and generate. So this first generation is going to take some time because it's going to compute the latents and then we'll go ahead and regenerate after to see how fast it goes. All right, let's go ahead and regenerate that. Wow, that's actually pretty quick. So 3.67 seconds for uh, five words right here. Um, and here we go. Hey, how are you doing? So there we go. Typical tortoise TTS, not the best output, of course. Um, but normally I would just run that through RVC and we would have something much more spectacular there. So it does training in tortoise just fine and it does inference just fine as well. So with tortoise out of the way, we're going to head on over to now RVC. All right, so we're going to go ahead and launch RVC right here. I go ahead, allow RVC access. And I had already done some training in here, so we will actually have a, a voice right here that we had trained. And so we can just go ahead and pick the finished one here, and then let's go ahead and get a song. And so here's the song right here. Hey there, Delilah. Uh, we're going to go ahead, copy path. Go ahead, throw this in here, and then here is... And then I didn't do an index, so we don't have an index for this voice that we trained. But RMVPE, we're going to leave all these the same. Throw this at 48k and convert and we'll see how fast this comes around. All right, so about 10 seconds for it to finish up, and here is the um, inference result. Hey there, Delilah, what's it like in New York City? And of course, we just have to transpose it up a little bit to get it sounding a little bit more like Marine, and let's listen to it real quick one more time. A thousand miles seems pretty far, but they've got planes and trains and cars, I'd want to you if I had no other way. All right, now let's hop on over to Stable Diffusion. Let's get Stable Diffusion up and running. All righty, here we have it. We've got Stable Diffusion here. We're gonna go ahead and pop open Mana Mix, which is the one that I use for my benchmark video. And let's go ahead and get a prompt up in here. Let's just do something simple like a medieval knight marching to battle. Do portrait shiny and then masterpiece. We'll go ahead and switch to DPM++. We'll leave the height 512, 512, and then we'll just go ahead and do sampling 3030, and then let's go ahead and generate an image. So here you can see Stable Diffusion going through the process, and it's going relatively quick. So, you know, this, this matches about the speed that I had in the uh, benchmark video. So we go ahead and regenerate right here. The second generation is usually always faster. We get about 4.8 seconds. So, um, if we go down to 20 for the sampling steps, we can get it even faster. So now we're at 3.3 seconds. And here we go. Here we have our um, our night. This is Stable Diffusion on the 3060. It'll run it just fine and generate in a relatively decent speed. If you don't want to generate nights, this is the main mix. We could go ahead and do something like an anime girl from Japan. We'll keep marching to battle portrait shiny masterpiece and see what it comes out with. And here we go. We've got the Mana Mix. The Mana Mix is trained on anime. So yeah, this 
is pretty cool. This is pretty awesome in my opinion. So here we have the um, the chat generation, the text UI, and what we're going to be using is the um, we're going to be using the Llama 2B 13 billion parameter Guanaco model and 13 billion parameters if you have an 8 gigabyte vram card you cannot run 13 billion parameter models but the 3060 is going to be able to run it just fine so we're going to go ahead and load this 13 billion parameter in and then you can see that it has successfully loaded it and then if we go ahead and open up task manager you can see that we we are using about 9.7 gigabytes of dedicated gpu memory so this would not fit on a 8 gigabyte um, VRAM card and you just would run out of memory for that so you would have to use shared memory for that which runs on the CPU which is much slower than the GPU so here we go um, something new in here is that you can actually talk to a character so here is an, an example character right here um, we've got a couple different chat styles uh, and here it is so you know it kind of has an introduction which is pretty cool in my opinion uh, but let's just go ahead and ask hey there can you give me a quick rundown on what the anime re zero is about we'll go ahead send that and then it's going to do a little bit of thinking and then here we go now it's going to start outputting and this is pretty fast for 13 billion parameter this is this generates like GPT-4 but the bright side is it's local and as you can see here we've got 12.67 uh, tokens per second which is faster it's generating faster than I could read so that is awesome and the 3060 is just such a bargain for being able to run all of these different things so this is the Ubabuga text generation GUI and the last thing we're gonna do is the voice changer okay so unfortunately I have not downloaded the voice changer on this PC yet so uh, we're gonna go ahead and run it and get that up and going and we'll be back once it's done downloading all of the things so here we have the voice changer it is all up and downloaded so we're just gonna go ahead and start it and we're gonna use the mining voice that I trained on RVC on this device so okay so here we are and I am using the voice that I trained on RVC a little bit earlier um let me go ahead and do the intro of Marin ah 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 Marin desu so yeah this is the voice changer with the 3060 I'm able to run it with Crate 4 at chunk 32 and the maximum extra um, I could probably bring this chunk down to 24. So let's see if this is how it sounds at 24. And then at 16, it might get a little bit weird. So we can actually see the allocation for how it's being used here. That is a little bit too fast, but run it at 24 or, um, you know, 32. And if you're playing video games, of course, you're going to have to go like way lower because of the amount of utilization it uses but um it is able to do the voice changer no problem at all all right and there you have it that is my rig that i built for less than 500 dollars. you probably could go cheaper with like a cheaper power supply less memory stuff like that but for what i'm going to be using it for it's going to be completely solid i'm going to be just using it for training that i don't want to run on my 4090 my main pc um that i can just run off in the background so so yeah the 3060 is a great graphics card to get your foot in the door you probably don't want to go with amd still at the current moment nvidia is going to be where you want to go for the most part but yeah if you want to see me do anything else or if you want to see anything in specific that you want me to do with the 3060 please let me know and once again thanks to flexispot i was able to maintain a more healthy posture while doing all of this by standing sitting and just being able to move around while i was doing all of the recording for that so i find that super convenient for myself and that's going to be it for today's video as always thanks guys and see you later